The Big 12 is expanding, so naturally I decided to make a new Big 12 tier list. D tier is bottom of the barrel, and S tier is perennial powerhouse. Let's start with the schools at D. Or should I say school? You guessed it, it's Kansas. If you picked a Big 12 team to have to rebuild from the ground up, Kansas would be the most difficult job. They did beat Texas last year and played Oklahoma close. Who knows, maybe they'll end up putting together a magical year like 07. But until then, as Baker said, Next, we have the C tier, and the first school in the C tier is Texas Tech. Since Leach left, they haven't won more than eight games and haven't finished higher than fifth in the Big 12. They've also been middling in the Big 12 recruiting-wise. Maybe Joey McGuire will be able to turn the tides in what will be his first collegiate head coaching job. Heck, can give any team trouble any given Saturday, but they just never seem to be able to get over the hump, especially as of late. Next, I have West Virginia. Now, it hasn't been smooth sailing in the Big 12. They've had some success, but it looks like they're still trying to find their footing in the conference. Since joining the Big 12 in 2012, for the most part, they finished in the top half of the conference, but they do look to still be a few major moves away from contending with the top dogs. Coach Neil Brown has a 17 and 18 record so far at West Virginia, so things might change sooner than later. Kansas State also falls into the C tier, I kind of have them middling between C and B. They have games where they look like they can compete with the best of the conference, and they have the ability to bring in talented players like Deuce Vaughn, who could be poised for an excellent season next year. But they're near the bottom of the Big 12 recruiting-wise. It's going to be interesting to see how they fare going forward. Now, Kansas State can say they've had prior success in the conference, especially in the early years of the Big 12, so it isn't out of the realm of possibility to return to that level, but it might require a Hall of Fame coach. BYU is my final C-tier team. As an independent, they've only had one losing season since 2011 and have finished the last two seasons ranked in the top 25. Many people expect BYU to have similar success in the Big 12. Personally, I'm not sold on them immediately being successful in the conference. They give me a West Virginia vibe. Will they prove me wrong? Probably, but that's just my gut feeling. Moving on to the B tier, I have Iowa State. What worries me here is where do you go once Matt Campbell leaves? Now he is under contract till 2028, but as we know, rumors swirl every season and coaches can leave whenever they want. I fully think he intends to leave at some point, and my question is, will Iowa State be able to continue to generate their level of success that they've had under Campbell? Let's just hope we don't see an 80s to 90s level drop off because that was a real rough period. Next, I have Houston. Dana Holgerson finally got things rolling at U of H, and it looks like it was just in time with the move to the Big 12 imminent. Honestly, it's about time Houston's been invited to the Big 12. Should have happened a while ago, but I don't see them lighting the world on fire day one. However, I do think that they will be competing for the top half of the conference, especially with the recruiting boost they'll get as a Power 5 team. TCU is another Texas squad that falls into the B tier. They've had an up and down time in the Big 12, including four losing seasons and three 11 plus win seasons. Initially, I thought TCU would be a top four Big 12 team year in and out, but that hasn't been the case. Sonny Dykes is taking over the program after having relative success at SMU. We'll see if he can field an elite TCU team or one more similar to the TCU teams we've seen over the past four years. Rounding out the B tier, I have UCF. They've been impressive in the American Athletic Conference, winning 10 or more games four times. Gus Malzahn brings experience coaching in an elite conference, and this team could surprise some people early despite losing quarterback Dylan Gabriel to OU. Plus, being the only team from Florida in the Big 12 could be a nice recruiting pitch. The first team in the A tier is Cincinnati. They really came along in the AAC under Luke Fickle, winning 9 or more games the past 4 years, including 11 or more 3 out of the past 4. The real question was, could they sustain this level of success without Fickle? And then he goes and signs a deal recently to stay till 2028. Even if he does leave early, Cincinnati has had 8 10 plus win seasons in the last 15 years with 4 different head coaches. So I'm not too worried. Since he has the opportunity to be what I thought TCU would be in the Big 12. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they do, especially with Fickle leading the charge. The next A tier team is Oklahoma State. One of the teams that I personally have in the driver's seat of the Big 12 moving forward. If I had to pick one word to describe OSU, it would be stability. They haven't had a losing season since 2005, which happened to be Mike Gundy's first year. 
Under his watch, Oklahoma State has finished the season ranked 10 times and even won a share of the conference title in 2011. Without Oklahoma in the Big 12, it will be interesting to see how recruiting is impacted in either a positive or negative way. I do expect them to win at least one Big 12 title within the first five years of realignment. I mean, they were just inches away this season. Baylor rounds out my A-tier teams. They've shown they can rebuild with a new coach, post Art Bryles and post Matt Rule. Baylor would probably be my favorite if I had to pick one team that I thought would succeed the most in the new Big 12. They're tied for second in Big 12 titles with Texas, which is mind-blowing if you saw how bad Baylor was in the early Big 12 days. I'm talking you would go to a game in Waco and it would feel like a home game for the other team. That is definitely not the case anymore. My main question was how long Dave Aranda was going to stay with the program and then he went and signed a deal through 2029. Not that they wouldn't be able to build back up with a new coach, but keeping him long term could put them on the track to being elite. You might be asking yourself, who's left for the S tier? And the answer is no one. No team stands out like Oklahoma since 1996. I don't think there will be a single team that emerges and dominates the conference like they did. And at the end of the day, I think this is a good thing for the conference and for the sport in general. Parity is great for college football. And the new Big 12 is set to be one of the most exciting and competitive conferences in the country. I'm fully prepared for the comment section to be a minefield. But let me know what I got right and what I got wrong. I'll be honest, I would feel comfortable switching almost any of the B or C tier teams between the two tiers, but that's what I like most about this new Big 12. There are a few favorites, but I truly believe that the conference is wide open for any team to win it. Now, it isn't too often that a team joins a new conference and immediately starts dominating it, but there are some quality teams coming in, so I'm curious to see how they fare in their first few seasons. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps a lot, and I truly appreciate it. Have a great day, and see you all in the next one.